Welcome into the channel. I'm Cody Stutes. Let's talk some Texans. Let's ask and answer four questions facing the Texans after the bye week and what we want to find out and see from this team in the final 11 games of the season. Carolina Panthers on deck and up next for the Texans. We'll get into the Panthers a little bit later on this week on the channel. But today, four questions about the final 11 games of the season for the Texans. If you like the video, throw me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and in the description down below, you can check out Houston football. I do all my writing about the Houston Texans, and you can read all 11 questions that I have for this Texans team post by week on the site. Let's get into it. My first question, where else do we start? What's a better question about this team than how else will C.J. Stroud impress us in the final stretch of this season? How else will C.J. Stroud continue to show off that he is one of the best draft picks in franchise history? He's one of the best draft picks in this year's draft, and he is the best rookie quarterback in the NFL right now. So what else is left for C.J. Stroud? I mean, what I really would think about C.J.'s season so far is he's playing like I expected him to play at the end of the year. After he showcased some of these things sporadically, he settles down and he consistently showcases these things, but he's doing it on a consistent basis early on in the season. He's playing the final six weeks style the first six weeks of the season. It's really impressive. Heck, he's a top 10 quarterback heading into the bye week in passing yards, passing touchdowns, QB rating. He's only thrown one interception. What else is left for C.J. Stroud? I think that's the really exciting aspect of Stroud's season is if he's already this good, how much better can he be as he gets more experience and he has more input to give better output? I think the biggest thing for C.J. Stroud is we're going to see maybe some more consistency. We've seen a little bit of hiccups here or there, maybe four complete quarters over a five-quarter stretch, three complete quarters over a four-quarter stretch, things like that. A full start-to-finish game from C.J. Stroud a couple of different times in the final 11 games of the season. That would be fantastic to see. Not to say that he's inconsistent, but putting together three quarters, three and a half quarters, a good play with a little hiccup here or there. Look, you'll take that from a rookie quarterback, but if he can find a way to put it together for four quarters on a consistent basis, this Texans team is going to be a tough team to beat on Sundays going forward. And I'm excited to see what Stroud and offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick can do getting deeper into the playbook. What else can C.J. Stroud execute in Bobby Slowick's playbook in the offense that they want to run things that maybe they weren't comfortable running to begin the season that now a few weeks in CJ Stroud's comfortable and the offensive line is settled and they can get deeper into the game and the deeper into the playbook for this team. That's the exciting part. So how else will CJ Stroud continue to impress us or well, remains to be seen, but there's a lot left in this season and there's a lot to be excited about when it comes to CJ Stroud's final 11 games in his rookie season. We talked about that offense a second ago. How about the rushing attack? Will the rushing attack get going? We saw signs of life before the bye week. The Pittsburgh game is probably the best game that they've had from an overall rushing standpoint, but this team has got to run the football better. Running the football better is going to take some pressure off of C.J. Stroud. It's going to open up more things for this team. And, oh, by the way, it's going to make the defense better because they're not – right back out there after two, three, four, five plays of the offense, and they're right back out there on defense. Those short drives in the Atlanta game really kind of took a toll on the defense. If you can run the football, you won't have as many of those. And again, we saw some of that success before the bye week with a little bit of a time split. You saw Xavier Hutchinson get in there and help them out with some sweeps. Devin Singletary played well. I would expect that we'll see more Devin Singletary than we saw in the first six weeks in the final 11 games, just by virtue of it feels to me, and I feel like it's become apparent 
Damian Pierce sharing the load might be the best way to maximize what Damian Pierce brings to the table, putting him in in certain situations, putting him in in situations where you know you're going to run plays where he's been successful, maybe some more downhill stuff, less decision-making that Damian Pierce has to make. Put him in in those situations. Let David Singletary handle some of that zone running and the decision-making that the running back has to make. Let him handle some of those things and let Damian Pierce take care of some of the hammer stuff. And it keeps Pierce fresh late in game so that he can go in and wear down opposing defenses. How does this rushing game get going? Well, it's up to Bobby Slowick to get this thing going. The blocking, the run blocking, was good enough heading into the final game before the bye week. That's what Bobby Slowick said. That's what D'Amico Ryan said. And then they kind of got going a little bit and they were pretty happy overall with the rushing performance. You got to be able to see more of that coming out of this bye week, certainly against the Carolina Panthers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, those first couple of opponents out of the bye week. You love to see the rushing attack get going. Part of that will be helped by the offensive line, hopefully being the same, practicing together more and more and getting more used to each other and just finding out better from a timing situation, when to run the football, and from an execution standpoint, from the running backs to the linemen to everybody involved in that rushing attack. That has got to get better, and if that gets better, then we're really cooking with this offense here in Houston. Speaking of the offense, how about the defense for this Texans team? What's next for D'Amico Ryan's defense? I would think that consistency is probably the biggest thing for this defense. Consistently putting the same guys out there and consistently getting performances from those guys. This defense has had quite a few injuries upset the apple cart over the course of the start of the season. Jalen Petrie missed time with the chest injury. Denzel Perryman has missed time with the hand injury. Jimmy Ward missed time to start the year. He finally got back after missing the first two weeks. You've had some other guys like Hassan Ridgeway go down. Tavier Thomas has missed time. Some consistency with just getting guys in the lineup and having them play a lot. I think the biggest injury I think I just skipped over. Derek Stingley is missing a lot of time for this team. Stingley kind of goes out of sight, out of mind since he's been down since week two, but Derek Stingley is a guy that eventually be back for this defense, but Steven Nelson has played really well at the cornerback spot, but consistency, putting the same guys out there in the same positions with the same opportunities to succeed. If it's going to be Blake Cashman and Henry Toto at the linebacker spot with Christian Harris helping them out, get them out there a bunch. If Perryman's going to come back when the hand is healed up, get him out there. Find some consistency from who's playing, how you're using them at the linebacker spot. The secondary, you filled in nicely Derek Stingley's time with Shaq Griffin opposite Steven Nelson, Petrie, and Ward back there at the safety spot with Eric Murray as the key backup behind them. Just put some consistency together from that back seven. And then from the front four, you got to break through and get some sacks. I know the pressure percentages are really high for this team. You know, Sheldon Rankins had jumped up into the top 20 for defensive tackles. Malik Collins had been in the uh, top ranks for defensive tackles from pressure percentage. Will Anderson, Jonathan Grenard had spent time as pressure percentages, pass rush win rate. Uh, in that list as well, but you got to get home and get some sacks. Uh, this team's got about nine sacks on the season. Jonathan Grenard's got three and a half of them. Will Anderson has just one. The Texans could use some more sacks, and that'll help you get off the field on third down. You make a big play with a sack, you get off the field on third down, and you can get this offense back on the field. They haven't been able to get those big plays on third down. A sack would be one of those. Force the other team to punt, steal yourself some yards with those sack yards, and get things going on that defense. So I think consistency is probably the thing I look for from D'Amico Ryan's back seven and then from that front four. Get after the quarterback, turn some of those pressures into sacks, and then keep the pressures high. You can get some big sack numbers and just kind of luck into a sack here or there. Keep the pressure high, convert some of them into sacks. And I think the way D'Amico Ryans and defensive coordinator Matt Burke have talked about it, and turning those into sacks, you just got to execute just a tiny bit better. There are some quarterbacks coming up on this schedule that will give you opportunities to sack them. Get after them. Will Anderson, 
crushing his college teammate Bryce Young. That's what we all want to see on Sunday. The final question I have here in the video is, will the Texans be playoff contenders? Yes, will the Texans be playoff contenders? Well, as long as they're in the AFC South, which they're not going anywhere right now, they're going to be in the playoff hunt. The AFC South is a division right now that does not seem like it's going to need a lot of wins to win. If you think back to the past couple of years, you have not had to have 12, 13 wins to win this division. Nine wins this year might do it. Ten wins this year might do it for the team that wins the AFC South. So the Texans, yes, are going to be playoff contenders with the fact that they're in the AFC South. But can they also be in the muddled up AFC playoff picture? And to that, I also say yes. You think about some of the disappointing teams, some of the teams that have had hiccups and missteps so far this season. And you got to imagine there's plenty more for those teams. Consistency is going to be the name of the game in the NFL in 2023. The team that is consistent the most likely will win the most and will find themselves in the playoffs. If you can put together some consistency when the Colts are up and down on a week-to-week -week basis, when the Cleveland Browns are up and down on a week-to-week -week basis, the Bills are up and down on a week-to-week -week basis. Look, the Chiefs are going to be in the playoffs. They're going to win the West. you got to imagine that the Ravens have the best chance uh, to win the North, and the Dolphins have the best chance to win the East. We already talked about how you get there from the AFC South. So if you don't win the AFC South, Dolphins, Chiefs, and Ravens would be who I think will win the other divisions. Then you say the Jaguars win the South. There's three spots. You know, Can you be better than the Bills? Can you be better than the Browns? Can you keep pace and stay ahead of the Indianapolis Colts? Can you make sure that that Week 18 matchup against the Colts doesn't matter from a playoff seeding perspective? All these are fun questions to ask about a team that most of us would have settled for six wins before the season got started. Well, we're going to want to playoffs now expectations change and as i look at the schedule 11 games remaining i look at eight games and i feel like the texans have a great chance to win that football game a couple of games sprinkled in there where i'd say yeah, probably just a good chance to win this game or don't have a great chance or don't have a good chance to win this game but eight games that i feel great about the texans competing and potentially winning against those opponents and when you think about three wins Eight of those games, say you get six of them, bing, bang, boom, you got nine games, and that might be enough to win the AFC South. And if not, nine games is what got the final playoff team into the playoffs in the AFC last year. Why not the Houston Texans? Dream no little dreams. Are they playoff contenders? Are they going to be playoff contenders? I hope that question remains yes throughout these final 11 Games. What questions do you have about the Texans here in the final 11 games? Let me know in the comment section. We're always getting after it in the comment section. You can check out my other seven questions about this Texans team at Houston football, www.houfootball.com is where you can find all my writing. It's also in the description down below and on the way to that description, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already turn the little bell on so you don't miss anything from a notification standpoint about when the videos go live. Appreciate you watching. I can't wait till we talk Texans again soon.